All right, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today we are going over this example, um, drawing shear force uh, and bending moment diagrams again, all right? So this one's gonna be a bit different. There's gonna be a hinge in the middle, but no worries there. It's exactly the same as how we've always done it. It's just going to be one extra step, all right? So um, first thing we wanna do, let's just jump right into it, right? So solve for reactions right and these reactions are going to come from uh, splitting up the system right whenever you see a hinge like this always think to split up the system all right so it would look something like this and something like this right and then this is a this is B this is C uh, all right so uh, let's let's just call this A, right? So we have six kilonewtons here, right? We have, let's just say, we'll define BY like this and then BY like this. We're splitting it up because um, it's a hinge and we have to add equal and opposite kind of forces at uh, when we split it up, right? So when we put it back together, it cancels. CY is here, uh, eight kilonewtons is here and six kilonewtons is here. All right, so we just solve, right? Now, uh, to do this in a shorter way, because um, because I don't want to spend uh, too much time on this, uh, and you can pretty much tell, right? Since, uh, since this distance is actually symmetrical, right? We can just say that uh, CY and BY is equal. So this equals four kilonewtons, and then this equals four kilonewtons. So then this would also equals four kilonewtons, but going down, right? And then finally we can solve a y, uh, six going down and then four going down. So that's 10 going up to resist it. All right, if you're confused with what I just did, uh, it's okay, just do sum of forces, sum of moments, you'll get there, all right? Now, in this case, I do have to put a note that because of this loading, this entire structure is stable. How, um, because if we take a look at the sum of moments around A, right, it should equal to zero. So we have um, four meters here and then six meters here, right? If it was any other loading combination, we wouldn't be able to kind of um, work with this, right? Because if we just do a sum of moments around A, right, we have four times six, and then this should equal to four times six, right? Uh, four times six from from this load and then this distance and then this load and this distance, all right? So if you're confused at why I wrote the same thing twice, it's because it's from different loads. They equal, they cancel out. Long story short, you don't need to know this, but in this case, it's a stable structure, okay? So we're on to the good stuff here. Um, a y equals 10 kilonewtons and C y equals four kilonewtons. All right. So uh, how do we do this? Same as always. All right. Whenever you see downwards force, whoa, downwards force go down, right? So we have negative six. Okay. And then nothing in between here and here. Right. And then plus 10. All right. So we're going to go up to four, right? Because negative six plus 10 positive four, nothing in between A and B, right? And finally, we get to this point, all right? Now, what do we do that this hinge, all right? Here are a few options, all right? We can either go down four. You might ask, what's the logic behind that? Well, we have BY goes four, right? Um, do we go down four and up four again? Because there's a four and then four, right? Or do we just do nothing at all? Well, uh, pause the video if you want to find out, but long story short, um, you can basically treat it as just one system, right? Uh, if there's no externally applied force, right, like a reaction or just an e external load like this, you can just, because because when you piece the system back together, you have to remember that the, the forces cancel out. So you can think of it as going down for and up for again, or you can just ignore it because it cancels out anyways, and just say nothing happens in between here, 
All right? And then finally, when you get to this point load, you go negative eight, four, negative four, and then finally plus four back to zero. Okay? So that's pretty simple enough, right? Draw a bending moment diagram now. You guys should be pretty familiar with this one, but just going over it again. So we have negative six times four, negative 24, four times 10, 40, and then four, t negative four times negative four, 16, right? Uh, these are just the areas, all right? Distance and then magnitude of the shear. So once we have that, just draw the bending moment diagram, okay? From zero, no moment at the end, right? It's not a fixed support. It's, uh, there's no applied moment at that point. And start with zero, okay? Go to negative 24, okay? And then plus 40, right? So uh, let's see, 24 is here, maybe 16 is over here, right? Uh, negative 24 plus 40, 16, okay? And then finally, minus 16, zero. And if you're wondering why I drew these straight triangle lines, it's uh, just because it's a rectangular load, right? Rectangles, straight lines, okay? So uh, that's really it for this problem, actually. And something I should mention is that you notice in the bending moment diagram that this point, this point at B is zero, right? Um, if you somehow miraculously drew your bending moment to, uh, diagram to scale, right, it would look something like this, right? And that's because it's a hinge, right? There's, there's no moment at this point. It's a hinge. So it makes sense for moment at that point to be zero. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's it for this problem. Uh, I went a bit quick with the reactions, but hopefully you can figure that out by pausing the video. That's uh, something that I don't have. So, I mean, something you can't do when you're watching lectures live, I guess. Uh, wish you can just pause the professor, right? So, yeah, um, some things to keep in mind. A little summary. First of all, when you see this hinge, break it up, right? Solve for the reactions. I'll probably post videos on uh, in more detail just solving the reactions again. But once you have those solved, right? Um, you can piece it back together and just treat it as a whole system, right? You don't have to break it up um, over here, unless maybe there's a force applied over here, but that's, that's a bit different, right? So once you have that, get the areas, solve for bending moment diagram, easy peasy. Um, nothing to it. Yeah. All right. That's it for the summary. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope you guys found it helpful. I'll see you in the next video. All right. Peace.